Whether you are traversing mountain trails, pedaling city streets, or racing on a track, a key part of bike safety is the bicycle helmet, a simple lightweight device designed to protect the human head from injury. A bike helmet is extremely important for bikers and uh, you can classify them into two different types. One is more recreational or mountain bikes and the other one is for high speed biking like time trials. Dr. Nikhil Gupta is a mechanical engineer at the Polytechnic Institute of New York University. By his title, you might think he spends his time tinkering with cars, but mechanical engineers design, develop and test a variety of devices we use every day from refrigerators to elevators. Gupta is responsible for testing the materials that make up the bike helmet that could save your life. Helmets usually have a three-part construction where outer layer is very strong and stiff, which protects the biker from friction with the ground or road. Then there is an intermediate layer, which is a stiff foam, and that takes most of the impact force and protects the biker. And the innermost layer is a flexible foam, that is there for a better fit on the biker's head and also to ensure the air circulation inside the helmet. While it might just look like a solid object, a bike helmet is actually composed of as many as three of the four states or phases of matter, solids, gases, and sometimes liquids. The outermost layer of a bike helmet is a hard plastic shell. This shell is an example of a solid. Solids have a definite shape and are not easily compressed and retain their shape until something such as a crash causes them to deform. The outer shell is usually made of plastics and these days uh, there are lots of different plastics invented which are very high performance. These plastics are not just hard but usually they are also very much wear resistant, the property that you are looking for. So it's an example of a solid. The middle layer of the helmet is a rigid foam. This foam is a combination of a gas and a solid. Air, a gas, is trapped inside tiny pores of the foam. The solid and gas work together to protect the rider. The air which is inside the pores is actually confined. And when we try to squeeze this foam, this air does not escape out and it resists the compressive forces. So this is a mechanism the way the energy is absorbed inside these foams and it uh, saves a person from injury. Think of an airbag's role in a car crash, cushioning passengers from the impact. In a bike helmet, these tiny pockets of air serve the same purpose, absorbing the energy of an impact in the event of a crash. The third state of matter, liquids, are relatively rare in bike helmets, but researchers are testing liquid-injected foams and gel padding for the future of bike helmet safety. Both gases and liquids are fluids. Fluids take the shape of their containers. When pressure is applied to fluids, their shapes change. But once the pressure is removed, fluids fill their containers again. The liquids are always heavier than air. Air is a gas. And when you fill some of these foams with liquids, uh, usually they become heavier. So now what we try to do in research labs is we try to find out can we use thin layer of liquid filled foam compared to a thick layer of air filled foam and get the same kind of performance. Gupta's research focuses on testing the middle layer of the helmet, the rigid foam, and the testing methods are both fast and loud. During an impact test, a loaded weight is dropped from a set height onto the foam. The foam is then examined to see if the materials were able to sustain the impact. The cells have been crushed at the location of the impact. And uh, visually this damage is very difficult to see. So this is one of the reasons that manufacturers say that after every impact, you need to get a new helmet. A high-speed compression test is designed to simulate conditions which are similar to a biker crashing at 80 kilometers per hour. Gupta uses a compression gun to fire a plastic rod into the foam. The foam is then examined using a scanning electron microscope to see if there is any permanent damage caused by the impact. And see, this is now crushed under high-speed compression. The next time you strap on a bike helmet, thank engineers like Dr. Gupta. 
And don't forget about the role that solids, gases, and liquids are playing in reducing the energy that could reach your skull if you ever have a crash.